Throwing $55 million down the drain seems unrealistic. Nobody would ever do this, no matter how rich they are. Shockingly, though, Netflix just did that when it gave $55 million to Carl Eric Rinch to direct a sci-fi series that never saw the light of day. Now we know that Rinch didn't really use all of the $55 million for the production of the show he promised. Instead, he bet $11 million on stock market options. And to no one's surprise, his bet failed. Surprisingly, Rinch recovered and bet whatever was left from the $11 million on crypto, more specifically, Dogecoin. Luckily for him this time, his bet turned into $27 million less than a year later. This brings a critical question. If Rinch was able to do all of that with Netflix money, should Netflix shareholders be worried? And more importantly, could this fiasco impact Netflix in the long run? Welcome back to PST Markets, where we provide daily stock market updates. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the whole fiasco between Netflix and Carl Rinch, and how that could lead to a very negative outcome for Netflix in the long term. So keep watching till the end to find out what the outcome is, how this happened, and what trades the rogue director did. In late November, a New York Times expose revealed how director Carl Rinch basically scammed Netflix for $55 million for a TV show he might have never planned on completing. It all started in 2018, near the height of the streaming boom. At the time, Rinch and his then-wife Gabriela Rose's Bentoncourt were working on a sci-fi series, but they needed funds to start the project. So they began pitching the idea to studios in hopes of getting picked up for a season. You see, back then, streaming was gaining steam, and streaming platforms were desperate for content. So naturally, Rinch's project started a bidding war with half a dozen studios and streaming platforms trying to nab the project, given that Rinch had directed 47 Ronin starring Keanu Reeves. After a competitive auction, Rinch reached an informal eight-figure agreement with Amazon. But Netflix swooped in at the last second and offered Rinch millions of dollars more and sweetened the deal by offering something studios rarely give directors, the final cut. With that, Netflix won the bidding war and agreed to pay $61.2 million for the rights to the series. Now, final cut is usually only granted to established directors who make money for their producers. Think about the likes of Steven Spielberg, James Cameron, and Quentin Tarantino. But Rinch wasn't and still isn't anywhere near their legendary directors. The thing is, Rinch's only experience was directing 47 Ronin, starred by Keanu Reeves. You probably know it, but for those who don't, 47 Ronin was a complete bomb. In fact, it's considered to be one of Keanu Reeves' worst movies to date, with a very poor box office performance and an equally disappointing critical reception. It all seems so obvious in hindsight. A movie with a $175 million budget handed to a first-time director, who apparently was dating Ridley Scott's daughter at the time, retelling a famous Japanese legend. It was all a recipe for disaster. And disaster it was. In addition to 47 Ronin's lackluster performance, its production was troubled by many difficulties. For instance, Rinch clashed with one of the movie's producers, Scott Stubber, to the point where he was removed from the editing room. Anyways, after Ronin 47 flopped so badly at the box office, Rinch went back to making commercials. And on the side, he and his then-wife Roses began working on a passion project, a sci-fi series called White Horse, which Netflix eventually bought. At first, Rinch financed the production with his own money, and just like with Ronin 47, there were many problems during production. During a shoot in Kenya, Rinch insisted on filming for 24 hours straight. And in Romania, the leading actress caught hypothermia doing a scene bare light in the snow and had to be rushed to a hospital. But still, Rinch successfully secured funding from 30 West, a production company backed by billionaire Dan Friedkin. However, the whole project was in jeopardy when 30 West threatened to take possession of the project after Rinch missed a production deadline. Luckily for Rinch, though, Keanu Reeves intervened and agreed to invest in the project and become a producer. And with the money Reeves contributed, Rinch finished editing six short episodes to pitch the big streaming platforms. Since Netflix viewed the project as a potential sci-fi franchise similar to Stranger Things, it emerged victorious in the race to win the show's rights and renamed it Conquest. Now, as I said earlier, Netflix granted Rinch pretty generous terms, and by doing so, Netflix ignored several red flags. The first red flag was the project's past. At the time, Rinch was fighting with 30 West and some other early investors who received $14 million from the $61 million Netflix paid to get the project under a legal settlement. The second red flag, which is, by the way, a very big red flag in the movie business, is that the series didn't have a complete script. 
But even that doesn't come close to Netflix completely overlooking Rinch's checkered reputation in Hollywood. In fact, Stubber, whom Rinch clashed with in the production of Ronin 47, was already in Netflix movie division. Some Netflix decision makers didn't even consult Stubber before buying the rights to Conquest. That's pretty bad management. So with all those red flags, Conquest was set up to fail from the beginning. And as a result, Netflix's decision to fund the project is head-scratching, to say the least. Shockingly, problems with production started to come out right after Rinch got the funding for Conquest. Rinch's behavior grew erratic. He claimed to have discovered COVID's secret transmission mechanism and to be able to predict lightning strikes. More importantly though, Rinch missed many production milestones. He was also toggling between two versions of the script, a shorter one that matched the original 13-episode plan, and one twice as long that would require greenlighting a second season. So Rinch asked Netflix to send him more money, and despite all of what was happening, Netflix relented and wired Rinch $11 million to bring its total outlay to more than $55 million without even having one episode to show for it. Normally, Rinch should have used the $11 million to keep working on the project, but he simply didn't. Right after he got the $11 million from Netflix, Rinch transferred $10.5 million to his personal Charles Schwab brokerage account, and in a matter of weeks, he lost $5.9 million from risky options trading. Was that enough for Rinch, though? No. He transferred what remained of the $11 million to a Kraken account where he placed bets on Dogecoin. Luckily for Rinch, his investment netted him $27 million after he liquidated his Dogecoin positions in May 2021. Now, during that time, Rinch was in the middle of a divorce lawsuit, so he went on a spending spree to hide his crypto winnings, according to Rose's legal team. Rinch bought five Rolls Royces, a Ferrari, and high-end furniture and designer clothing, all worth around $8.7 million. Rinch contested that the cars and furniture were props for conquest and were paid for with Netflix production money so that Roses wouldn't get any of them during the divorce trial. But Rinch's stance changed and sued Netflix for owing him payments totaling more than $14 million, arguing that the money was contractually his. Now Netflix disagrees with Rinch's stance and claims in a motion it filed in July that the payments were contingent on Rinch hitting several production milestones, which he never did. As of now, the case went to a hearing before an arbitrator in November, and a ruling is expected soon. So this whole fiasco shows that Netflix failed at one of the most important business aspects, risk management. Netflix saw 47 Ronin and its failure, yet they signed Rinch to an eight-figure deal. What's even worse is that Netflix still saw its share of difficult behavior, yet it sent Rinch $11 million with no financial controls. Netflix didn't even wire the money to a joint account so that it could oversee expenses. And still, Netflix sent $11 million to a director who was already way over budget. This screams glaring oversight, which could lead to a shareholder exodus if they start losing faith in the company's ability to manage their risks. And this raises a legitimate question. If Netflix can afford to waste $55 million on a project without even getting one full episode, why does it keep raising its subscription prices? When Netflix reported its Q3 earnings last October, it also announced that it was increasing prices on its basic and premium plans. So now, basic plan subscribers will pay $11.99 per month instead of $9.99, and premium plan subscribers will now pay $22.99 per month instead of $19.99. However, Netflix kept its ad-supported plan at $6.99 and its standard plan at $15.49. This isn't the first time Netflix has raised its subscriptions, though. Back in 2014, the standard plan cost $8.99 per month, and the premium plan was priced at $11.99. Then in 2019, these prices were $12.99 and $15.99. So the recent increase may not go well with Netflix subscribers when they know that it can afford to lose money on failed projects. In fact, Americans are already fed up with Netflix increasing prices. Almost 40% of American Netflix subscribers plan to cancel their subscription due to increased prices. A survey conducted by Civic Science found that nearly two-thirds of American Netflix subscribers are contemplating canceling their subscription or switching to a cheaper ad-supported plan. Now North America is Netflix's second largest market, and having two-thirds of its U.S. subscribers cancel their subscriptions or switch to the cheap ad-supported plan would certainly harm Netflix's profitability. Now we've seen what happened in 2022 when Netflix plumbed at 67% after losing subscribers. So if Netflix subscriber growth is in the negatives due to the recent hike, a similar or worse drop can be expected. 
This brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this one. Your support means everything to me. And tell me what you think about the whole Netflix wrench fiasco below in the comments. Will the whole fiasco shed light on Netflix inefficiencies when it comes to managing money? And will Netflix shed customers after the recent price hike? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of them. If you're watching till now, thank you. And see you in another video soon.